Deps or PMs, snaps, flat packs, these weird library files that look like a zip file. What the heck is going on with program installation files on Linux? Why can't it be as simple as just downloading an exe file like on Windows? Okay, we're going to jump on that a bit later, but what gives? What is it with all these different formats? In today's video, we're going to talk about one of Linux's greatest obstacles in software development, its distribution, and why it might not be that big of a deal for you as a consumer. So let's dive straight in. Fragmentation is a big word that you sometimes hear when talking about the Linux desktop. It starts from choosing a so-called distribution to different subdistros down to simply installing packages. Want to download a program for Linux? Should you choose a DAP, RPM or just one of these files? Maybe you also need to download some dependencies for a program via the command line. Do you use app, dnf, yum, pacman or zipper? And why are some installation commands different? Like having to use the terminal is not something that an average user should be confronted with. And having to deal with all of this stuff, especially if you don't know what to search for, is complicated. So how did this happen? Well, remember these files that look like archives? Well, they are. They usually consist of the source code for an application, which you need to first compile before you can use it. Compiling is essentially the process of converting a bunch of text files which we can read into machine code that the computer can understand. Compiled code is basically like looking at the matrix. Then we started seeing formats like DAP, which already contain compiled code and just work, as long as other dependencies are installed. If not, then DAP files reference them to the package manager, in this case apt, and it looks them up. It's kind of amazing that this works as well as it does, but it also begs the question, why didn't DAP become the default then? Well, it was essentially a series of things. Parallel development, implementing a newer and faster way than the other, just having fun and probably also a bit of marketing, showing that you provide something different and maintain it well. The point is, different packaging formats branched off are doing something slightly different and since many distros are being based off other ones, these formats have become too big to just get thrown out the window. And this is kind of a problem, since very often the package names or compiled dependencies are being called different and you as the consumer need to have some know-how to find out which format you need for your system. Not good. Let's fast forward to today. Nowadays, when you want to install a program on Linux, then you might have already heard or read about Flatpaks and Snaps, the supposedly future of Linux packaging, as they are cross-compatible with a lot of Linux distros. Alright, so why do we still need the other formats then? Well, the idea behind Flatpaks and Snaps is that they come with their own dependencies or even environments that are as much as possible isolated from the distro itself. Explained in terms of graphics, you basically have a graphics driver installed on your own system and another one inside the flatback environment, which just talks to the host one. This ensures that applications stay compatible across distributions and operating system versions. However, these formats often come with a performance penalty, as they are often being compressed or, due to their sandbox approach, are not allowed to interact with your system you might need it to. For flatpaks, if you have several disks in your system, you might need to adjust permissions or the application can't access these directories. Flatpaks in particular also have the problem that they can't really replace local programs that hook deep into your system. So even though they have great desktop application support, there are always edge cases, whereas a native DAP or RPM package are better. Summarized, DAPs, RPMs and similar packaging formats were made to make it easier for you to install applications, but have become very fragmented over the years. New formats that are cross-compatible do exist, but they come with performance or even higher storage demands due to their environments. They are also sometimes limited in their functionality, which is not really great. So is Linux destined to be doomed and the fragmentation of these packaging formats is always going to be a problem? Well, not necessarily. See, many people are mad that they can't install programs on Linux the same way as they can on Windows. But the truth is that the Windows way is actually the worst way to install apps. Besides that weird drag an application into a folder thing from Apple. There is a reason on why app stores on phones work. It's just simpler and technically also more secure. Open up the app, search for what you need, press on install and boom, done. 
Instead, people complain that they want to open a web browser, search for an app, find a link that leads to an actual safe download link, which just downloads a setup file instead of the actual application and then finally install it. And if that's your preferred way, then you can still do that on Linux if you want to. Nothing stopping you. The preferred way, however, is through the software store. They are increasingly becoming better and they also try to kind of solve the packaging format problem. See, nowadays on a modern Linux distro, Flatpak support is basically a given. And if you want to download an application, then chances are that there is just one entry which you install. From a consumer perspective, this would be ideal, since who cares if it's a DAP, RPM or Flatpak, as long as it works. Well, technically, most software might not be packaged directly by the developer, but if they do, then this should be the default selection, as it's basically the verified way that the application works as intended. From a developer's perspective, it's not quite as easy since you still need to evaluate what your app is actually for, like you don't want to make a flat pack for a low-level dependency. But the funny thing to me is that Windows is not much better nowadays. There are EXE and MSI files, yes, but then there is MSI X for Windows 10 and above, universal Windows platform apps, which already got overhauled by other ones, so the effort is not really ideal there either. Fragmentation in packaging formats on Linux is not as bad as it seems, at least if you are a desktop user. Sure, I'm not going to deny that the overall situation is horrible, but then again, Windows is also not really much better. It just has a longer history and people got used to it. If you are coming to Linux from a mobile perspective, like how you install apps on your phone, then you will have a much different experience. And that's where I'll leave it. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to help the channel to make even better videos, then you should definitely check out our membership program, which features exclusive bonuses, as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. I really want to hear your opinions on the package format situation on Linux. Do you have any troubles with them, or is there something that I missed entirely? Please let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.